Welcome back, baseball fans. We got another wild series going on here. American League East Divisional Series between top contenders Boston Red Sox and the Baltimore Orioles. This is game five of the best of seven. A uh, series that started in Fenway with the teams split. And then uh, the Orioles won both in Baltimore. And it's a game five. Orioles win this. They win the series four to one. They don't want to have to go back to Fenway Park. This has been a really fascinating series between two of the best Stratomatic teams I have in this league. The Orioles, their strategy based on the scheduling of off days, was zeroing in on the weakest link on the Boston team. And by looking over here, the Boston offense is a juggernaut and they have no weakness. Sonny Siebert is a pretty damn good ace and Sparky Lyle's an excellent closer. The weak link is number two starter, Bob Ojeda. And based on the days off written into the schedule, in this particular game, Ojeda was slated for games one, four, and seven because he and Sonny Siebert can pitch on three days rest. Meanwhile, the Orioles starters, Cuellar, Palmer, McNally, and Mike Boddicker, all of them can pitch on three days rest, so it doesn't really matter. But the Orioles said, we got to beat up Ojeda in one, Ojeda in four, and if there's a game seven, beat them three times. Well, guess what? They beat the crap out of them in the first game, knocked them out in the fifth inning, and they just beat them 17 to eight in game four. And now they just need to get one more win. And worst case, they'll see them again if there's a game seven. The other advantage the Orioles have is the Boston Red Sox, for whatever reason, do not hit left-handed pitching as well as they do right-handed pitching, even though they play in Fenway Park. But the fact that any team destroys right-handed pitching makes the Red Sox, in my opinion, the favorite to win the damn World Series, even as a, if they end up being a wildcard team, because they just have a bazillion guys with, Yastrzemski know, has 40 homers, Petroselli has 40 homers, Reggie Smith, 26, Canigliaro, 36, Tony Armas, 43, Dave Kingman, 36. It's just stupid to play games with the Red Sox. But here we are. We are in game five. The Orioles are psyched to finish the Sox off in this regular season battle for first place. And it is, unfortunately for the Red Sox, they have to go with their number four starter, Mark Thurmond, the Orioles send one of their Cy Young Award winners, Jim Palmer. The only problem is, Jim Palmer got knocked around for six runs in six innings against the Red Sox in his last start because the Red Sox have Jim Palmer's number. So, that's the battle here. Can the Red Sox beat up on Jim Palmer for a second time to send this series back to Fenway Park? So there's your uh, pregame analysis between two of the greatest teams in Stratomatic, the Boston Red Sox and the Baltimore Orioles. Here we go, let's get started with Carl Yastrzemski, the leadoff man. Cause again, somebody's gotta lead off. I mean, just cause he hits 40 home runs, right? Yastrzemski pops a third. Mike Andrews bounces a short. Rico Petroselli gone. Solo shot, Reggie Smith. Bouncer to third, that's Brooks Robinson. You're out. One nothing Boston. Paul Blair leading off for the Orioles. Base hit. Davey Johnson. 2-4 left. Cal Ripken. One of the other theories is if Cal Ripken can avoid hitting into any double plays, the Orioles will win the series. <laughs> the more double plays he hits into, Boston will win the World Series. So, so far, Cal Ripken in four games and one batter has not hit into a double play yet. So Ripken, in this instance, flies the left. Yastrzemski, who's a 1E16, which is ignorant that Stratomatic would do that. There's an error. I mean, come on, man. It's Carl Yastrzemski. I mean, so what if he made a lot of errors? Make him an E10 or something. They made him an E16. That's two base error. 
Second and third with one out for Frank Robinson. And Frank Robinson with a base hit in the right field. Now, you're thinking, oh, let's score the guy from second. Um, no, because all the arms on the Red Sox are ridiculous. Yastrzemski's got a minus three arm in left. Armis, minus four in center. Reggie Smith, minus four in right. It's insane. You cannot score off that outfield. So Robinson will just get one RBI. Ripken has to hold up a third. And you have runners on the corners, one out for Boog Powell. Boog Powell, right field X. We need an error. He's a 2E16. Another error on another Boston outfielder. <laughs> this is a weird team. I'm, every time I get a Red Sox game, they're usually down five or six runs and they come back and win. So it's second and third, with one out. Eddie Murray bounces a short. That will score a run. Everything's unearned. And with two outs, Brooks Robinson walks. And Rick Dempsey! Holy crap! One of the three Stooges. Rick Dempsey, we know he was the MVP of the 83 World Series, but in 1984 he had 11 home runs and 330 at-bats. That is a three-run bomb. Nothing's earned. And the Orioles bat around and are plate six so far. It's Buford. Rolls a second. All right, the Red Sox got the Orioles right where they want them in a 1-6 deficit. This is where Boston thrives. So here comes Tony Armas in the second inning. He strikes out. Kingman, catcher's card. Uh, Dempsey's a one. Wade Boggs, 3-6, single on 18, base hit. George Scott, 46, flies the left. Palmer gets through an inning unscathed. Here's Paul Blair again, rolls a short. Davey Johnson, walks. Cal Ripken, left X, no double play. Yastrzemski, a 1-E16. No error this time. And Frank Robinson, double one to four, double. You have second and third, two outs for, hey, you're Boog Pal. And he strikes out. All right, uh, we're in the third. Jerry Moses strikes out. Yastrzemski, 1-7. Uh, Homer, 1-2-10, gone. 6-2. Mike Andrews, 64. Homer, 1-14, to gone. 6-3. to three. Rico Petroselli rolls a short. And with two outs, Reggie Smith, single one to nine, lines out. Yeah, Palmer's given up three runs in three innings. That's about right. He keeps his ERA of nine continuing. He's given up nine runs in nine innings in the series. Eddie Murray, catcher's card. Jerry Moses is a 4-E-10. And an error on Moses. Brooks Robinson, 66, flies left. Dempsey, 58, pops to second. And Buford, 1-8, sky's the center. All right, fourth inning. 6-3 Orioles, Tony Armas, 57 Ks. Kingman, 56 Ks. Wade Boggs, base hit. George Scott, 210 left. Palmer gets through that inning. Every other inning he pitches okay. He's the girl with a curl. Paul Blair. <laughs> Pops to second base. Davy Johnson pops to first base. Ripken, 1-5-K. Okay, here's the Red Sox inning again, the odd number innings. This is where Palmer get, is going to get knocked around, right? Jerry Moses bounces to second. The shorthanded Davy Johnson is a two, and he makes the play. Yastrzemski, 65. That's going to be a double one to four base hit. He can steal bases. He's an ace stealer, but he's not going to run here. Mike Andrews, 2-4, short A, double play. Now you may think, may I, Yastrzemski should have tried to steal to stay out of a double play, even though they're down three. Not with that lineup. You just gotta keep turning cards, no bunning, no hitting and running, no stealing bases, just keep flipping cards until you get 10 runs in one of the innings. That's how you do it if you're the Red Sox. Frank Robinson, for the Orioles. Lines of second. Boog Pow, hit by the pitch, ooh. There's a glare from the world. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Murray flies to left. And it's Brooks Robinson. This guy's a center. Palmer, can you give me six, buddy? Six to three. Rico Petroselli, left. Reggie Smith rolls to third. Armis, it's gone. Tony Armis, the fourth homer of the game for the Red Sox. Six to four. Kingman, short. All right, 
This is what I'm saying. Here come the Red Sox. Six to four. Thurmond. Uh, Red Sox have a decent pen. We'll just see how Thurmond goes here in the sixth. Dempsey, center. It all happened in the first inning, and it was all errors in the outfield for uh, Thurman. Otherwise, he was, he's thrown four scoreless innings since. Buford walks. All right, Buford and Blair batting back-to-back -back here. Blair, single dot. Damn it, couldn't go to third. All right, first and second for Davey Johnson. Then we'll, we'll yank him there. I don't think Mark Thurman has anything to prove in this series at this point. <laughs> So we want the righty who has the most impressive. That's Vincente Romo against right-handed hitters. Vincente comes on in the sixth. There's two men on and one out. Background music is Crack the Sky. They are a Maryland band. So that's what they're listening to in the stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. Vincente Romo against Davey Johnson. With runners at first and second. Dave Johnson. 3-5. Dave Johnson. Homer 1-3. Double to center. The speedy Blair. Can't believe they uh, held off the third base, but they did. Second and third, one out. They're bringing up for Ripken in a 7-4 game. 1-7 is a K. And with two outs, Frank Robinson. 3-6 is a walk. Here you go. Boob pal. Big spot here. Let's finish these clowns. Base is loaded. Two out and a six. Boob pal. Line drive one to four. Chippy single hits a single one to four with a one. Tough break for the Sox. And it's eight four. Eddie Murray, base is still loaded. Still not enough runs. They need to finish these guys with a nice two out. 49. Slow roller to second. Mike Andrews, the two E26 at second base. To 2e26, and Mike Andrews makes the play. Andrews, nice play there. And the Orioles, again, they put a lot of guys on. They have a four-run lead with nine outs to go. And Palmer, can, you know, he doesn't break until the eighth. Just got to watch this guy, though. Orioles have a lousy bullpen. Um, Jay Hal's good. Dick Hall's good. The other two guys are not. So you really want Palmer to pitch into the eighth. He's supposed to. I mean, he's not supposed to be giving up six, seven, and eight runs every time he goes out there. Wade Boggs strikes out. Come on, Jim. Keep it going. George Scott flies a lot. Jerry Moses. Sky's all right. There you go, Palmer. Take us to the stretch. 8-4. Vincente Romo still in there. Brooks Robinson. 48 to K. The dipper, Rick Dempsey, rolls a short. And Buford. If you're wondering why Buford's batting ninth instead of leadoff, I let him and Paul Blair alternate leading off lefties and righties when I use the Orioles. So today, Buford 2-5, and he missed it. I'll show you the Buford card. Homer 1-8, flies the right. Missed it. Another missed opportunity. Four-run lead in the eighth for Palmer. And here we go. We get to the top of the mountain again. The Red Sox have four solo homers. And are down four with six outs to go. Yastrzemski, 1-6. Yastrzemski gone. Second of the game. 8-5. to five. Mike Andrews, 1-3. Sky's a center. Petroselli, 67. Petroselli, a hit off of Palmer's card. I'm going to go one more batter. Reggie Smith, 48. Lines of second. Dick Hall's warming. And you know what? I'm just here. So what we're gonna do here. We're gonna yank Palmer after seven and two thirds because Armis just crushes homers against righties. He doesn't do that that badly against lefties. So I'm gonna use the one lefty reliever for this one batter. That's Don Eddy. He's gonna come on in the eighth and with a three-run lead and face Tony Armis. Who, if he homers, anyway, it's still uh, would be a one-run lead. So Tony Armas against a lefty. Let's look at his card. He's a lot better against righties. Tony Armas against Don Eddy. The pitch, 55 is a walk. So he walks off of Eddy. Now you got Kingman. <laughs> Same thing for Kingman. He also hits righties better than lefties. So, again, Eddy's going to pitch to this guy. Now, 
he still can't lose. He can blow the game for, for Palmer. So Kingman Eddie, here's the pitch. 58, ball four. And the bases are loaded, two outs, and it's Wade Boggs. <laughs> oh, my. So Eddie is going to pitch to uh, Wade Boggs here. The bases are loaded, two outs in the eighth inning because he he's unlikely going to hit a home run here. And he doesn't hit triples. So it's, he's unlu unlikely to drive all three of these runs in. Wade Boggs against the lefty. Here we go. 52. Skies the right field. Frank Robinson uh, gets underneath it, and the inning's over. How about the Red Sox, though? 8-5. They are a dangerous freaking team. We go to the ninth inning, bottom of the eighth inning. Stanley comes out after, excuse me, Vincente Roma comes out after an inning and two thirds. Sparky Lyle has blown two saves in the series. They're not in a big hurry to get him out there. They'll go with Gary Wagner in the eighth. Gary Wagner in the eighth of an eight five game. Paul Blair, 55 is a strikeout. Dave Johnson, 1-7, pops a short. And Ripken, 45, rolls a second. Ninth inning, I'm not going to mess around with this. Dick Hall. So the Red Sox are going, yeah, bring in a right-hander. We, we prefer right-handed pitching. So Dick Hall, the ace of the bullpen, or the closer, I should say, in their bullpen, comes on in the ninth. It'll be George Scott, Jerry Moses, Yastrzemski, who has two home runs already, in the ninth. The Oriole defense is locked and loaded, ready to go. We are three outs away. Here we go. George Scott leads off the ninth. 49. Bounces a short. Ripken. This is a goal. Well, he's going to be a one, I believe, right? He's a 1 26. That's short. And he's out. Jerry Moses. 1 12. Fouls to the catcher. And with two outs, Stremski. 3 for 4 with two home runs. 2-8, rolls the second base. Yastrzemski rolls out, and the game's over. And Dick Hall does it. He gets the save. And it all happened in the first inning. In an unusual way, the Orioles really, they can't score runners off the throwing arm, so instead they just hit, hit balls directly to the outfielders who drop them. All the Boston outfielders' E ratings are over 12. It's really just bizarre. The game's over. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dick Hall gets the save. Don Eddy came on in the eighth and faced Armis, Kingman, and Boggs. Walked two of those guys. Got one other out. And Jim Palmer uh, wasn't a masterpiece, but you know he he got that uh, Boston Demon off his back. He gave up uh, five solo homers to the Red Sox. Wow, gets a win. Doesn't walk anybody. Too much control, Jim. <laughs> you kept the ball too close to the middle of the plate. You didn't walk anybody. Uh, Wagner struck out a guy in an inning. Vincente Roma did a nice job in an inning and two thirds. Uh, didn't do that good a job. Give up two hits a walk and two Ks. Mark Thurmond, really unfortunate loss here. He gave up five hits and eight runs. They scored eight runs in those five hits. In the first inning, nothing's earned. In the sixth inning, two were earned. Really strange block. He walked four, struck out two. There it is. 1019, 1008, 8759. The Red Sox out hit the Orioles 9-7 and lost 8-5. And that's game five. So we'll see how this impacts the uh, race in the American League East. So that was a big win for the Orioles because they went up three games just in that series by winning four games to one. That's a plus three game swing in the, in the overall standings. So here we go in the American League East. The Orioles are 14 and three and they're hitting 285 with a 419 ERA, which is pretty odd for the Orioles. 
And Boston, because they did not able to come back and force a game six or seven, are stuck at nine and eight. Uh, the Red Sox are hitting 283 with a 484 ERA. And the Yankees are 7 and 8. So, right now, the Orioles have a nice little cushion in the American League East. But if the Red Sox get into the playoffs, watch out. That's it tonight from Baltimore and the American League East. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll catch up with you again soon.